Okay. All right, so we're gonna start in our heart opener pose. So if you come to your mat, if you're not already there, and if you grab your blocks, if you have two blocks, you're gonna create a T-shape, right? So one is for your head and one is for the space between your shoulder blades. Uh, and the, the one for your shoulder blades will go up higher than we normally think it is. So the base of the block, oops, long ways. Oh, I can't look at it in here. Um, base of it will line up with the, uh, where you the heart monitor strap or like uh, the end of your bra line. Uh, if you don't have blocks, right? Also the top one for your head could be on the first or second height, or you don't have to use it at all. That'll be a little deeper. Uh, if you want to use a blanket, you can do a nice little tight blanket roll and let it go down the length of your spine. If you have a bolster and you want to use a bolster instead, that is always an option to lay across it, okay? So allow yourself to find a place where you can get settled, to lay down and to begin to enter into this open heart space. As you settle here, can you imagine or envision the whole body just kind of softening or draping around the props? Notice and check in with your low back. So a couple options would be to extend the legs long, but sometimes that feels a little intense for the low back. So if that's the case, you can bend the knees, take the feet really wide, and then let the knees rest on one another. Wherever you are, can you allow the palms to face up so the shoulder blades can really snuggle in underneath you? And begin to just pay attention to the rhythm of the breath as it moves in and out, filling the torso, softening the shoulders. Heart openers here aren't only just impacting the physical space of the upper body, helping to create more space between each rib, letting go of some adhesions, right? Attaching those muscles to all of the bones, each rib here. But we can begin to really tap into the energetic and emotional capacity of the heart space as well. It connects us to our ability to love, show compassion, acceptance, and gratitude for ourselves as well as others. This energy here that we hold in our daily life is also the way we perceive the world. Perhaps you give yourself a moment just, just to check in with those qualities that you might be experiencing or noticing here today. With no judgment. Maybe compassion is hard right now or maybe it comes easy. Maybe forgiveness or gratitude. But either way, it's okay. It's enough and it's just a part of living. So allow yourself to embrace no matter how you arrive right now. Keep imagining softening the shoulders down towards the floor. And just observing and feeling that breath moving through you. Heart openers are so prevalent in the yoga practice because many of us develop a shield or a sort of armor around our heart space. It could be from many years of improper posture or experiencing challenging or even damaging experiences. As we protect ourselves here, we tighten but that also begins to restrict our mobility and flexibility. Our yoga practice attempts to 
remove these blockages we have that prevents us from understanding ourselves. And it begins to allow ourselves to see ourselves more deeply, relate to each other more authentically. Perhaps you allow yourself to set an intention for your practice. Maybe it's simply staying with the qualities of the heart space and noticing and observing how you interact with those qualities today or during your practice. Allow yourself to take a few breaths fully. And we'll begin to invite some movement to the fingers and toes. And if your legs are stretched out, go ahead and bend the knees and place the feet on the floor. And we're gonna slowly and mindfully roll to the left side and lay on our left bicep. You can maybe use your right hand kind of underneath the pad or behind you to grab those props out of the way. But we're all gonna stay on our left side and you're going to lay on your left bicep and you're going to pull your knees to your chest as tight as you can. Now, we're going to curl up into like, imagine like a little clam shell and you're going to take your right hand and mirror the left. So your elbows are probably bent and it's like both biceps are surrounding the ears. We're going to take a deep breath in here and a complete breath out. And then we're going to inhale, begin to open that right arm towards the sky. And exhale, let the right shoulder come to the ground behind you. And then we're going to do that again. Inhale, lift the elbow back towards the sky. And exhale, close your back on the left. We'll do it again. Inhale, open. Exhale, shoulder comes towards the space behind you. Inhale, elbow towards the ceiling and exhale, close. So let's do that two more times. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Last one. And as you exhale and you enter into your full twist with that right shoulder coming down behind you, let's stay here. The gaze might even go to the right. And if it feels good and you want to open the arms out like a T or a cactus, you can, sliding them out from underneath the head. Try to keep those legs pulled to your chest, trying to get that twist into the thoracic region of the spine here. One more breath. And you're gonna slowly roll back to your left side. And then we're gonna roll onto our back and make our way to our right side. And we're gonna do the same thing again. So knees towards the chest. You're resting on your right bicep. You're gonna mirror the right arm with the left. So it's kind of like you're doing sit up, right? You're in this little tiny clamshell here. And then with your inhale, you're gonna lift that left elbow towards the sky. And exhale, twist, let your shoulder come to the ground. And we'll inhale, elbow back to the sky. And exhale, close at your starting point. We'll do that three more times, moving with your breath. So opening up through the thoracic spine and around each rib will begin to allow us to access a deeper, fuller breath as well creating a sense of more vibrancy in the body. You might feel more awake, less lethargic. Maybe even just a little freer. On your last one, this fourth one, allow the shoulder to come to the ground. And once again, as you twist, you're gonna open the arms out if it feels good. Just an option, not mandatory. Your gaze might go to the left. Let the whole body just feel heavy here and take a couple of deep breaths. You might feel that breath expanding in the rib cage as much as it can, even though it feels restricted.
Okay, nice and slowly, we'll lo roll back to our left side. And we're gonna lay all the way onto our back. Place the feet on the ground, knees bent, shoulder blades tuck underneath you. Palms are gonna rest on the ground beside the hips. Your heels are directly underneath the knees, so you might be able to brush the heels with your fingertips. Shoulder blades slide underneath the back. Press into the triceps, engage the belly, and inhale, begin to lift the hips off the ground. Bridge pose. And now exhale, lower it down one vertebra at a time for a rolling bridge. You're gonna inhale, press into the feet, and lift the hips. And then exhale, return the seat to the ground nice and slowly for whole breath. And keep going with that, with that sequence, with your own rhythm. Really listening to your own body. It might be quicker or faster than my cueing, and that's okay. We'll do two more. Last one. And you lower all the way down. And we're gonna take a big stretch, reach the arms overhead and the feet out in front. And we're gonna go banana asana. So scoot the shoulders to the right and scoot the feet to the right. Now remember your left shoulder and left hip are still on the ground. You're just C-curving the spine. Take your left ankle if you want to and stack it over the right ankle. And maybe you use the right hand and hold on to your left wrist. If that feels like too much, just back out of it a little bit as we're gonna hold it for a few breaths here. Imagine breathing into the base of the rib cage and that whole left side waist. Imagine those ribs are like a little accordion. Opening and expanding and then softening back down towards another. One more breath. We'll slowly on your inhale, unwind and come back to center. Feel that long stretch. And then on your next exhale, you're gonna scoot it on over to the left. So I like to use my head like a little intern, slide those shoulders over. And then you're gonna take those feet over to the left. This time it might be the right ankle that stacks on top and the left hand might hold on to the right wrist. Right shoulder, right hip are heavy. Feel into space the breath is creating. Maybe recall your intention here for a few moments of quiet. Next inhale, we'll walk it back to center. Big stretch. And then exhale, pull your knees into your chest. Maybe you rock a little side to side here, massaging those low backs. Maybe you pull those eyes really close in, trying to let the hip flexors relax. Just kind of notice what feels good to you. And we're gonna begin to make our way up to a seated position. So options, right? You can use your hands behind your thighs and rock and roll, or you can roll gently to one side, which is what I'm gonna do. Use that top hand to press down and gently lift yourself up. And once you come into a seat, we're gonna take the legs long out in front of you. So if you'd like to sit on a blanket or if you have support that you like to use, go ahead and do so. I'm gonna suggest using your blocks, so hopefully they're still closed, maybe you need to get them, and place them underneath your knees. Pull the toes back towards you. Feel the front of the pubic bone rolling towards the earth as you sit up nice and tall. Slide the shoulders down the back. So staff pose, allow yourself to notice here the expansiveness of the chest. The grounding of the seat. Now, it takes a lot of energy, a lot of effort to share ourselves with the world, to speak our truth. But another part of that 
the flip side of the coin is that in order to keep the heart space clear and open, we must also learn to protect our energy, to check in with ourselves and know when to say no and when to say is enough. Take a deep breath here. And now exhale, begin to leave with the heart and fold over the legs. Creating the moment to round inwards, to protect the heart space and to get closer to the self. I encourage you to keep the, this principle in mind throughout your practice today. Truly listening in, creating that clear communication with the body and the mind. Two more of us here. and slowly begin to lift the body upright. Bend the knees and place the feet on the floor so you can move your blocks out from underneath you. We're gonna take a, a cross leg position. So essentially we're gonna go into our shoelace pose, okay? But first option is cross leg with your right shin in front. And if that, if that is gonna be where you're at, so just imagine squeezing those legs together. So instead of keeping the knees wide, you're keeping them narrow. Now, if you'd like to try your shoelace, so you can always um, come back to that if you want. You're gonna extend those legs out, bend your right knee, and you're gonna take the right leg on top and try to stack the right knee on top of the left by letting that right foot come back towards the left hip. Okay, so this is gonna be an option. Your second option is to bend the left knee and bring the left foot back by the by the right hip. Okay, so any, any one of those three options are gonna be perfect for you. You just wanna feel both sit bones rooted as you sit up nice and tall. Slide the shoulders down the back. Take a couple breaths here as you try to relax into those hips and those thighs. We're gonna take the right arm, reach it out in front of you with the palm down. And then you're gonna take the left arm and reach it on top. You're crossing at the elbows. And then you're gonna bend the elbows and bring the hands back to the shoulders. Okay, stage one, that might be enough for just starting, right? Stage two, back of the hands come together. You're squeezing the forearms together. Stage three is you might actually be able to wrap the palms together. I know that doesn't matter which stage you're at, you just wanna listen into your body. From here, lift those elbows up so they're trying to be in line with the shoulders. And you're gonna reach the elbows and maybe even the forearms forward to the space in front of you. Eagle wrapping the arms or your variation thereof with your shoelace legs. Feel length still through the whole spine and soften around the neck and the jaw. Can you breathe high into the chest space? Now part of the energetic heart center isn't just the front body, but it's about the side body and even the back, the space between the shoulder blades. Can you imagine creating space here between the shoulder blades as you continue to breathe nice and deep? Just a couple more breaths. Notice if you're beginning to feel sensation. Can you relax around it a little bit as opposed to fighting it? Next inhale, you're gonna unwind and reach the arms up towards the sky. And then exhale, fold over the legs, bring your hands down towards the ground and just lean over the legs. This might be a little lean. You might bring your forearms to blocks or the ground, chin rolls to chest. Wherever you're at, just allow yourself to soften into it. Creating each shape as your own. Letting go of expectations or desires, of ideals, these pictures that we create in our mind or that we see other people doing. That the simply residing, being, moving in our bodies is exactly what needs to happen.
And we're gonna use the hands and gently lift ourselves back upright. Bring your hands back behind you so you can lean back into the hands. And that'll gently allow you to unwind the legs. Reach them out in front of you, kind of like you're just laying on the beach here, propped up against the arms. Can you give your, your legs a wiggle or a bounce of the knees? And we're gonna move on to the next side. So remember your option and you can check in with each leg where you know, I mean, with, with each shape, see what feels best. This time it's gonna be the left knee that bends and stacks on top or the left shin front. Okay, just because you did one thing on one side doesn't mean it has to be the same on the second side because our bodies are often asymmetrical and we just work with the bodies to find balance in a comfortable and meaningful way as opposed to forcing it. Allow yourself to sit upright, feel those shoulders over the hips, soften here for a moment where we add your arms, try to relax those inner thighs and then we're gonna reach your left arm out in front, palm down, and then your right arm is gonna cross on top. Maybe the elbows bend, remember check in, hands on shoulders, back of hands or palms. You're gonna lift the elbows up towards the height of the shoulders and imagine reaching the elbows or reaching the forearms forward. Let the shoulders soften away from the ears a bit. Give yourself a few moments, a few deep breaths. Now, sometimes when we're in the shape, we tend to pitch forward. Can you allow yourself to keep those shoulders over the hips, feeling the core engaging slightly? That's gonna really help us lengthen through the back body. Breathe high into the space of the chest, like you can expand between the shoulder blades. And say our heart space is the place within us that we can trust. It, has, it holds our deepest wisdom and intuition. And if we allow it, it can be our inner compass. You allow yourself to listen into that heart space. And even when your vision is blocked, right? Even when we can't see beyond the obstacles in front of us, how can you know that there's still that guidance within that we can just simply check into? Soft around the sensation as opposed to fighting. A couple more breaths. Next inhale, unwrap the arms and reach them up. And we'll exhale, fold here over the legs. So whatever a fold means to you, right? It might just be a gentle lean. It might be completely bringing your belly towards the thighs. Let the chin soften towards the chest, really lengthening the back. Next inhale, begin to lift up. Bring those hands back behind you. Unravel the legs. Reach them back out. And we're gonna make our way to our tabletop, hands and knees. When you're ready, I know you all know how to cat and cow, so feel free to make your way to your hands and knees and begin your sequence of cat and cow movements. With your wrists underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips, with each inhale, you lift the chest, lift the tail, letting the belly soften towards the ground. And then you exhale, press into the earth, round the spine, like arching, like an angry cat, pulling the chin, the tail in. Keep moving with your breath. With each inhale, open the front body, swing shoulders away from ears. Exhale, round, imagine breathing into, stretching that space between the shoulder blades. Feel free here to take any organic movement that might be calling to you, right? Really making this your own practice by listening to your body. This is a great way to really uh, practice that and check in with yourself here. Maybe that side to side motion, so we're around in circles. Maybe that stillness by holding one shape 
for a couple breaths and then the other. We'll go about three more breaths whenever you are finished with that. We'll return to our neutral table. Take your time to get there. And from your neutral table, once you are finished, take your knees wide, big toes together, sit back and down, child pose. Hands stretch out to the top of the mat, head sinks down. Remember, child's pose is here for you at any point during your practice. Just allow yourself to settle. So any class, any time you're practicing yoga, it's also a really great place to come to if you just need a little grounding in your life, a feeling of center. Now really press down into each fingertip, press into the palm and lift the elbows. So the arms are activated here. We're gonna gently lift the head and you're gonna take your right arm and reach it underneath your left armpit. Now this could be a little bit, or you can really begin to reach and twist towards the left, bringing your right shoulder and right side of the face down to the ground. You can use a block here for support underneath the head. And I recommend sliding that shoulder away from the ear still. Your hand or your arm might slide a little closer towards the knees. Keeping that left arm active, you're going to also press into the back of the right hand. Imagine you could drag the right shoulder to the space behind you. Once again, breathing high into the chest, trying to spread wide through the shoulder blades, releasing any adhesions or tightness. Using the breath to help open the body. One more. Slowly as you press into your left hand, you're going to lift the head and unwind the right arm. And then you're going to switch sides. So left arm's going to reach underneath the right. Maybe you reach enough that the right shoulder or the left shoulder and the left side of the face can come down towards the ground or a ball. Stay active through both hands. Press actively through the back of the left hand and imagine sliding the left shoulder to the space behind you. Breathe deep into the chest, imagine opening more through the shoulder blades. brass here. Nice and slowly press into the right hand. We're going to unwind the left. And we're going to come back up into our tabletop and make our way into our downward facing dog. So knees come back hip width apart, tuck the toes, let the knees lift the hips, feel that A frame shape. Downward dog, hips are high. Give yourself a moment, pull out those legs, wiggle those hips, whatever movement feels good here. breaths. We're going to slowly begin to lift the heels high off the mat, bend the knees and look forward, and then begin to step the feet or walk the feet all the way to the top of the mat, bringing your hands to your shins and lifting up halfway when you've made it. Now feel the four corners of the foot rooting to the earth. Let your weight shift the balls of the feet. Press back through the thighs and really stick the tailbone out behind you. Slide the shoulders away from the ears. Reach the head and the breastbone forward. Knit the low ribs in. Your knees can have a soft bend in them to keep all those muscles engaged. And then allow yourself to float the toes. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more inhale. Exhale, slowly lower the toes down. Bend the knees a lot and fold over the legs. Let the whole upper body sink here. 
maybe sway side to side or shake the head yes or no. <sighs> now keeping those arms rolling forward, the head hanging chin to chest. You're gonna bend these a lot and we're gonna roll up one vertebra at a time. Use the stretch of the core to stack one back hold on top of the other. And so you eventually begin to rise. The shoulders will roll up, back and down. The chin will lift off the chest. If you roll the palms forward, you'll arrive in your Tadasana with the chin parallel to the earth. Stand tall for a moment. Feel those four corners of the foot root and imagine lifting the arches as you pull those four corners towards the middle of the foot, helping you create a sense of energetic lift all the way from the feet to the head. Take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky. And exhale, fold over the legs. Half sun salutation here. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Stand up, reach up, inhale. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Again, inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold. Half lift, inhale. Exhale, fold. Stand up, reach up, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. Interlace the fingers, press the palms towards the front of your space. On your next inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Then elbows can bend if you need to. Take a big breath in here. Now exhale, lean to the right. And inhale, stand up. And then lean to the left. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, bend the elbows a lot. Bring the hands behind the head. Open the elbows wide. Feel the energy still lifting up from the four corners of the feet. Pull the belly in and begin to lift the breastbone towards the ceiling. Shoulders slide away from the ears as you keep opening the elbows out wide for a big chest stretch here. Take a couple breaths. The head leans back into the hands. The jaw is soft. Next inhale, reach up, stand up. And exhale, take the hands behind the low back. Interlace the fingers. Okay, so inner, the fingers may interlace even a little bit or a lot of bit. And you're gonna take the hands and slide them over to the left hip. It could be on the low back. It could be all the way to the side of the hip. Pull the elbows together, stand tall, big inhale. And then exhale, let the left ear slide down towards the left shoulder. Keep softening the shoulders away from the ears. The shoulders will want to hike up to help you, but try to relax. One more breath. Inhale, lift the head back up. Slide the hands over to your right hip. Hug those elbows together. Stand tall. Inhale. And then exhale, right ear, right shoulder. A few deep breaths as you try to soften into whatever sensation you might feel. And relax any gripping that is occurring. Inhale, we'll lift the head back up. Release the hands behind you and then lift the hands back to the sky. And then exhale, fold over the legs, moving into our sun salutation A. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, plant the hand, step to your plank. Plank, right? Top of your push up, wrist underneath shoulders, actively press into the hands like you could lift the shoulder blades to the sky. Press the heels back behind you. Imagine lifting the inner thighs to the side as you keep pulling the belly in. The tailbone reaches to the heels. Shoulder side away from the ears, the breastbone reaches forward. We'll hold it for three, two, one. Hug the elbows in and lower to the belly. Now the chest and the belly should hit at the same time. So if your belly comes first, lower the knees first as you lower to make sure you're really supporting that low back. Now press into the top of the feet, hug the elbows towards the waist. As you exhale, engage the stomach. 
and then inhale, begin to peel the chest off the ground for Cobra Bhujangasana. And exhale, lower. Two more times. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, lower. One more time. Inhale. And exhale, lower. Tuck the toes. Engage your belly on your exhale. Inhale, lift your plank. And exhale to your downward dog. Hips are high. Two deep breaths here. Feel the hands rooting as you lift the hips towards the ceiling. Soft bend of the knees, lift the thighs, press back, and the heels heavy. Inhale. Exhale. Lift the heels, bend the knees, look forward. Inhale. Exhale, step or walk your feet all the way to the top of the mat. Maybe you hop. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Stand up, reach up, inhale. And exhale, hands to heart. We'll do that again one more time. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Half lift, inhale. Exhale to plank. Build that plank. We'll hold it for three breaths. Remember, your knees can be down to support you. Press the ground away. Feel the core engage. One more breath. Maybe you want to lower your knees first. Otherwise, hug the elbows in and lower to the ground. This time, let's bring the hands back by the hips as you untuck the feet. Palms are on the ground beside the hips. Keep pressing the top of the feet into the ground. Exhale, engage that belly. And then inhale, just lift the chest. And you can imagine walking the hands back a little closer to the feet, opening through the chest. The gaze is still down the tip of your nose. The neck is long. Maybe if you want to, you flip the hands off the mat. I imagine lifting the triceps towards the ceiling. Keep the low belly point in. Keep rooting to the feet. Breathe. One more breath. Exhale, lower the body down. Slide those hands back underneath the shoulders. Tuck the toes and exhale, engage your core. Inhale, lift to your plank. And exhale to your downward dog. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more. And exhale. Lift the heels, bend the knees, look forward, inhale. Exhale, top of mat. Half lift, inhale. Full exhale. Stand up, reach up, inhale. Exhale, hands to heart. We're gonna take our star pose. So it's a little, just a little balancing to wake up those ankles really nice and good. You're gonna place your weight into your right foot. Imagine lifting up out of your right hip. And you're gonna begin to open the left foot to the left and you're pulling the toes back towards the shin. Okay, your foot is still facing forward and you're gonna open the foot out towards the side of the room. So open to the, the left. Feel the belly pulling in, the tailbone reaches towards the heel and you might begin to lean a little to the left. Maybe even open arms out wide like a little star. Steady the thoughts, the gaze, the breath. And if you fall, it's okay. Notice how you're talking to yourself and how you respond. Can we soften around any judgment? One more. Mountain pose with your hands to your heart. Stand up. Take a breath. We're gonna move to the next side. Your left foot plants. Imagine lifting up out of your left hip as you begin to float the right foot out to the right. Keep those toes flexed and facing forward. Once you're here, you might begin to lean a little to your left. Whew. Maybe you open the arms out, softening the shoulders still away from the ears. Pull that little belly in. Breathe. You still feel the breath moving into the base of the rib cage. One more. Okay, come back to center, hands to your heart, stand up. If you're not at the top of your mat, go ahead and make your way there. And we'll inhale, reach the arms to the sky. And exhale, fold. 
half lift, inhale. And we're gonna exhale, plant the hands, step the left foot back. And we're gonna come up into a high lunge. So the right knee stays over the right ankle. Stand up when you're ready, reach the arms to the sky. Now what's gonna help you find support here is by staying active in the legs. So you're stacking the right knee over the ankle, you're pressing the left thigh back actively, and you're imagining you're hugging both hip points together and both thighs together, like you have a big skinny block between those legs. Zip around from the low belly, soften around the head, neck, and jaw. Take a big inhale here. Now on your exhale, you're gonna open arm twist to the right. So you're gonna to turn to the right and bring your right arm behind you and your left out in front of you, so your arms are like a T. Keep bending into that right knee, squeezing those thighs together. Maybe on your next exhale, you rotate a smidge more. One more breath here. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, bring the hands to the ground or your blocks. I'm gonna use block. Okay, from your block, you're gonna begin to straighten the right leg, letting the left heel feel heavy. Lift up halfway, lengthen the spine and then exhale, fold for pyramid. Mm, couple breaths here. Now we're gonna begin to lift up halfway, bend a right knee back over your ankle, move your box if you're using it. You're gonna come back to your high lunge, stand up. Slide your hands behind the back. All right, so options, right? You can hold on, you can interlace the fingers or hold on to opposite forearms or wrists, or you can reach your arms back like wings, right? So at this point, the hands are by the side, palms are forward. I'm gonna interlace my fingers. If you're interlacing your fingers, press the knuckles down towards the ground behind you as you lift up with the heart. So we're trying to still stay broad across the chest wherever you are. Now power stance, lean over the right thigh. Your right leg is gonna start talking to you. It's okay, press into the heel, talk back. Hug that right hip in, stay active in the left leg, pull the belly in. All right, stay here, right? Feel all that fire, or you're gonna begin to step that left foot in. You can straighten the right leg. You might keep the toes on the ground or warrior three, flex the left foot and lift the heel up towards the line of your hip while trying to keep both hips level. Can you stay present despite the sensation you're feeling, despite discomfort, despite the ability of that, that self-talk feeling like, I can't do this anymore. Can you hold on and breathe just a little bit longer? One more breath. Lower the left foot to meet the right. Release the hands, lift up halfway, hands to your shins. Exhale, fold. Lift up halfway. Woo, step that right foot back. Left side. Left knee over ankle. When you're ready, stand up, high crescent lunge. Use your arms however feels best to you, right? The, obviously they can be overhead or on your hips at your heart. Press back through that right leg, pull the belly in, keep pressing the left knee over the ankle. Imagine hugging the hips, hugging the thighs together. One more inhale here. And we're gonna twist now to the left, chest turns to the left, arms out wide like a T. Stretch wide between the arms. Inhale. Maybe you exhale, twist a smidge more. Deep breath here. Inhale, come back to center, arms up. And then exhale, bring your hands to the ground, straightening that left leg for your pyramid pose. A block underneath each hand is the most supportive option. I like it on the highest height and underneath my shoulders to really support me. Hug the left hip back. The knee does not have to straighten all the way. Reach the head and heart forward and you can stay in a half lift or you can fold. One more breaths here. And you're gonna lift up halfway. Bend that left knee, begin to lift back up, high lunge. Arms overhead, hug those thighs together. Exhale, bring the hands back behind the low back. Maybe the opposite index finger is the front. Press those knuckles down or take your favorite variation of your arms here. 
lift the heart, big inhale. Exhale, power stance, lean forward. Press into the left heel. Hug the left hip in, stay active in that right leg. Stay here or begin to straighten the left leg, stepping that right foot in. You can even stay here on your toes for most support or flex the foot and begin to lift the foot up for your warrior three. If you're in warrior three, imagine lifting up from the inner thigh. Imagine reaching the whole back body up towards the sky and the breastbone still reaching forward. Breathe wherever you are it is enough. Hey, right foot's gonna come down beneath the left. Release the hands into your half lift and exhale full. Hang here for a moment. Okay, so if your block is nearby, if not, you can either use your hands on your shin or on your, your fingertips. I'm gonna use my block on my highest height. I'm gonna use my second, but you can use either one you want. You're gonna plant the hands kind of underneath the chest and your hips are still over the heels, so long spine. And you're gonna place your left hand down, bring your right hand to your right hip, twist the chest to the right and bend your left knee a lot so you can pull that right hip back. So left hand down, shoulders slides away from ears. Left knee bends, right leg tries to straighten. As you lengthen from tail to head, you rotate the chest towards the right. Maybe you lift the right arm to the sky. Do breath here. Last one. Right hand comes down. And we're gonna switch sides. Plant the right hand. Bring your left hand to your hip. We're gonna begin to twist to the left as you bend the right knee. Lengthen from tail to the head. And you rotate a little bit more. Maybe lift the left arm few breaths. So feeling balance between the heel and the balls of the feet, not sinking in either direction. One more. And exhale, lower it down. Lift up halfway. And you're going to exhale, step back to your downward dog. Take two breaths here. If you want a vinyasa, you by lowering or sliding to plank and lowering for an up dog, feel free to do so. We're gonna begin to make our way to our tabletop pose, so we'll all be there. And we're gonna take our rolling hand up. We're gonna take melty heart first, just kidding. So from your tabletop position, your hips are gonna stay over your knees and you're gonna walk the hands forward to the top of your space, letting the heart sink towards the ground. You can use a block underneath the forehead or the chin, or the forehead or the chin can come to the ground. Try to keep the elbows lifted, but of course, if that is too much, if that feels um, any sharp or shooting pain, especially, lower the elbows down. That'll be a little more supportive. Give yourself a few breaths here. Feel those hips lifting high, kind of like your down dog. The top of the feet are still rooting. Two more breaths. Okay, now lower the elbows down. Lift the head. Slide onto your belly. You might walk those knees back so you come into sphinx. We're only going to be here a second. It's just a transition. We're going to come into our side lying Buddha pose. So listen carefully. You're going to use your right. So your forearms are parallel out in front of you, right? To start. Elbows might be under or just a little ahead of the shoulders. Your right hand is going to come to where your left elbow is. And you're going to take your left hand and step it behind the right hand. Now you're going to use that left hand to press into the ground to roll yourself open, letting yourself rest on your right hip and thigh. All right, now you're in your reclining Buddha. So you can either take your left hand and slide it down your hips or keep it in front of you for support. Now, if your legs are straight, reaching towards the back of your mat, you might squeeze the heels together, feel the glutes engage. For more support, you can bend the knees softly and let the left foot slide behind the right. Try to lift up a little out of your right shoulder, so you're pressing into the right elbow, but then try to soften around the rib cage and let the ribs sink down towards the ground. Soften the shoulders away from the ears. Let the gaze travel down the tip of your nose. Take three breaths. One 
one more. Okay, you're gonna use your left hand, bring it back in front of your chest, lower the hips to the ground, and come back to your sphinx, both hands forward, both forearms on the ground. Press into those feet, lift the belly, lift the chest, big inhale. Then exhale, soften slightly. Take your left hand to where your right elbow is. Right hand is gonna go behind the left hand. Press in your right hand, open the chest, open the hips to the right, resting on your left hip. Take your favorite leg variation, so legs can be straight, squeezing the heels together. Or for more ease, tack the feet or uh, scissor the feet and let the knees bend a little. Right hand can support you and um, resting on the ground or it can rest down the legs. Lift up a little out of your left shoulder, but then let your left rib cage sink towards the mat. A few deep breaths here, softening the gaze, softening the jaw, maybe even coming back to your intention. One more breath. Use your right hand to support you. Come back to your seats. From your sphinx pose, feel the spine long, shoulders slide away from the ears, root down through the feet, one inhale. Stack the hands, open the elbows wide, rest the head on the hands, bend the knees so the feet are going towards the ceiling and sway the feet side to side like a windshield wiper. The feet come back down. Slide the hands underneath the shoulders. We're gonna press yourself back to child's pose. Knees might come together this time, and the hands might come by the feet. But of course, feel free to take the other variation as well with the wide knees and the arms extended in front of you. Give yourself a moment to soften around this shape. Checking in with that heart space. Energetically, emotionally, physically. We're gonna slowly use the hands, lift the body back upright. Scoot the feet around so you're sitting on your bottom again and the feet are out in front of you. We're gonna take our Baddha Konasana. Oh, wow, well, let's actually take one foot pose first. I know you were hoping I said that. So you're on your bottom, your knees bent, feet planted. You're gonna hold onto your thighs or you're gonna reach the arms out ahead of you, right? Hands on thighs, more supportive. Arms out front, a little more challenging. Slide the shoulders down the back. Imagine those shoulder blades can like kind of scoop behind and lift the heart center up. Lean back a little so you really feel the core turn on. And from here, you might flow the heels or maybe you flow the whole foot. Now it can, the positions don't have to be parallel to the ground, but eventually the feet might lift up in line with the knees. Pull the belly in. Imagine pulling the chest towards the thighs, the thighs towards the belly and soften where you can. Maybe that's the gaze, the jaw. Breathe wide into the rib cage. If your thighs are talking to you, can you pull the low belly a little bit more? Two more breaths, you got it. Last one. Lower the feet, lift the body, inhale. Exhale, bring the soles of the feet together, letting the knees open out wide. Maybe you use a block or a prop under both knees. Hold onto your shin, sit up nice and tall for your butterfly or bodhikonasana. Exhale, hold over the legs. If you're holding onto your feet, just try to keep the pinky toes grounded. We try to refrain from the pulling or the tugging ourselves into the shape, letting the body just naturally fold. Even if that's not a very big fold, that is okay. Breathe into any sensation you might be feeling and notice if there's somewhere you might be able to soften or relax a little bit more. Nice and slowly, we'll begin to inhale, lift back up. 
scoop the knees, plant the feet. Maybe you slide your blocks a little closer towards the hips. Okay. Reach the arms out or hold onto the thighs. Take an inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, pull the navel towards the spine. Bring your chin to your chest, look towards the navel. And we're gonna roll down one vertebra at a time. Once you're there, you're gonna take a big stretch. Reach the arms overhead, feet out in front. And then exhale, pull the right knee into your chest and give it a good squeeze. We're gonna take a single leg twist. So open the right arm out and then let your left hand guide the right knee over towards the left. Your right hip will lift. Your right knee can hang out in space or use one of those handy dandy blocks that might be near you. Give yourself a couple of breaths here. Just neutralizing the spine from our forward and back bending. And perhaps you envision this as the sense of ringing out the body and the mind ringing out from what's no longer serving you. And we'll gently lift the gaze, engage the belly to bring that right knee back to the chest. And then we'll change legs, lengthen the right leg, pull the left knee in. Give yourself a moment here, take a big breath. And then we're gonna open the left arm out, use the right hand, guide the twist to your right. Left knee can hang out or use a block for support. The gaze can go in either direction. Allow yourself just to relax the muscles over the bones here. We'll inhale, lift the gaze, engage the belly, bring the legs back to center. Give them a good squeeze, both knees into your chest this time. You rock and roll maybe a little side to side, just massaging that low back. Now I'll give you just a couple of moments here to take any final remaining poses, remaining poses that will feel best to your body. So if you want a happy baby, another twist, maybe a supported bridge or a figure four, right? A crossing the ankle over a thigh. Anything that might feel good to you for just a few breaths, making your prayer practice a little more complete and a little more your own. And if you're not sure what to do or if you feel okay and ready for your final rest, then perhaps you allow yourself to make your way there. Traditionally, Shavasana is laying down the mat with the legs long, the arms out extended beside you, kind of like mountain pose. There are other options. And your final rest is here to help you uh, new neutralize and nourish your nervous system, bringing some harmony and equanimity back in. So really your Shavasana and your final rest should look however it feels best to you. Wherever your body feels comfortable and safe, you can begin to make your way there as soon as you're ready. You can lay down on your back your side, your belly. You could even sit for a few moments of meditation.
Yoga has the power to last long after we roll up our mats. And heart opening has the power to positively affect the way we see ourselves, the world around us, and how we interact with others. We allow ourselves that deeper connection to our authentic self. breath to deepen, inviting some gentle movement to your fingers, toes, maybe rolling the wrists or the ankles. But of course, if you would like, if you want to stay in Shavasana for as long as you would like, feel free. Otherwise, we'll begin to make our way to a comfortable seat, stacking the spine upright, taking your time really mindfully. And once you're upright, let your hands rest on your body wherever you feel most connected to yourself. So in your lap, on your thighs, maybe on your heart or in a prayer. Check back in with the body, the breath, the mind, the heart. Notice how the breath moves through you. Filling up the rib cage, hopefully feeling just a little more free and expansive. I cannot tell you what lies ahead, but I can tell you, you are free to open your heart to peace, no matter your uncertainty. Morgan Harper Nichols. Let's take a deep breath into the nose. H-A, side out to the mouth. <sighs> and together we bow in gratitude. Thank you so much for sharing your practice, your time, your space with me today. I hope you have a lovely weekend. And I will see you next time.